overcome oh yeah oh yeah he has he has redeemed us good morning everybody uh so i got a special treat for you i'm not the one doing announcements this morning 
Uh, this is Connor. He's one of those, meaning pastor's kids, uh, the senior pastor's kid. And you have permission to discipline him. You won't go to hell if you discipline the pastor's kid. Um, I was a pastor's kid, so people didn't discipline me. Look where it got me. So here you go. Directory update. Please consider putting your name and phone number. Okay. Please consider putting your name and phone number in or RSC directory or updating your info. This is the last week. <laughs> Good job. How do you think he's doing? Well. No, no. He sounds like a telephone operator, okay? This is a directory of a day. Okay, dude, you got to put more life into the next one, okay? This Wednesday, <laughs> the youth is having a costume party and a concert. You better come. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome, Nate. What are you going to be? Uh, they're all adults in here, dude. Yeah, they should come. They should come. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, first of all, every year we do a costume contest, costume party, and it's sweet. Last year, uh, do you know who Adam Levine is of Maroon 5? Okay, I came as the Adam Levine Barbie doll. It looked great. It was sweet, okay? So, but if you do have students, we are doing that, and then we are going to have a concert at 8.30. So the adults, you won't hear like a booming sound over you, the whole youth group. Well, you, maybe you will. I don't know. But the concert won't happen until afterwards. Um, and sorry to say, it is a little more metal than K-Love. So if you listen to K-Love, just to give you a heads up. Uh, and then the last announcement he did not want to give, um, Kairos Ministries, the women's ministry that goes into the jail, uh, they are wanting their chocolate chip cookies. If you sign up to make them, they need them by this coming weekend, okay? This coming weekend, there will be boxes out there that you can put the cookies in. Uh, and then if you can, please pray for these women. There are prayer lists out there for that. You can still make chocolate chip cookies, too, if you didn't sign up. So just straight chocolate chip cookies, no nuts in them. I was told to tell you that. Is that all the announcements we have? Okay, good. Okay, you did an awesome job, Connor. I'll give you that one. Hey, whoa, whoa, no, no, hold on. Come here. You got to pray, man. You don't like to talk to God? Got to do something about that. Okay, let me pray for us, and we'll take up our offering. Uh, Lord, thank you for a great day. And um, you're incredible and amazing, and I ask that you grab all of our hearts, Lord. Please, please do something incredible in us. And, and even if it's, if it's tough, if there's things that need to be ripped out of us, Lord, let us let you do it, and let us uh, seek you and, and want to be more like Jesus Christ in every way, God. We give you everything, including this offering. In your name we pray, amen. Open. 
Christ, which you really didn't sign up, you gave your heart to him, you said, I'm either going to do it all the way or not do it at all. You know, and uh, I'll be honest, I, I didn't do that in the beginning. But something happened to me. I signed up saying, Lord, I want to see if you're real. And I tried him out. And guess what? I found he was. And that not only did he love me, but I learned to love him back a whole lot. And I never regretted that. I never regretted making Christ as the Lord and Savior of my life. He makes a change in us. It's by his love. And I pray that as we go out, that we show the love of Christ uh, to others so that they know who he is too. about God is good but if there's one thing that we would pray for what would it be that would be like God that we'd love like he loves I want that to be the difference in us that we love like he 
loves. And that's a big thing, isn't it? Lord, thank you for who you are. You are majesty. We bow down before you. And you're a loving God. We worship you.
you. How many of you found yourself changed in the presence of God? We're not the same. Doesn't matter if we're good people or if we've had lots of issues. When we come to the Lord, we just bring who we are. And his love penetrates all of it. I found myself having to open my heart to him, though. How many of you ever had walls that you just blocked yourself off because you're scared it would hurt? Or you're afraid that you would seem foolish? I've been there, done that. But the Lord kept just revealing himself to me. And he still is even today. And uh, with my whole heart, I say that I love him more than ever. I'm glad I didn't quit. And I'm glad I opened that door in my heart and allowed him to come in. I may have done it just a little bit at a time, but he found his way. And when I trusted him more, I opened it more. And, you know, I found like that there's no one like him. Other people in my lifetime let me down. Things, circumstances, I found myself and I was scared. But when I opened that heart door completely to the Lord and allowed him to fully penetrate, I found like, there is, this is real, and there's no one like him, and I want more of him. Because he is faithful, and he's true. Lord, we worship you. There's no other, no other one that can do what you do. God, I love you. God, I love you. I love you. Lord, be in this place and just penetrate hearts and minds, and those hearts that are closed. Lord, Help them to just open them up. And Lord, I pray you reveal yourself even more.
The Lord is good. How he longs to have you. If you don't feel like you're important, maybe you don't feel like anyone even loves you. Let me tell you, the Lord does. And you can have this wonderful relationship with him. If you feel empty, if you feel incomplete, that's his spot. That's his spot. Lord, thank you that you come and you fill us. Oh, Lord, my heart just loves you. Be with the word of God today. In Jesus' name. Forevermore. Hey, that was good. Was that good or not good? Is that good? Should we just cancel our worship time around here, or do you guys want to keep it? Do you want to keep that music, or just you want us to just kind of quit? You, do you need that music or not? Man, that's like an IV, man. That goes right in here and <laughs> hits your heart, doesn't it? I hope it does. Kevin and Jennifer with us this morning. They're back from Peru. Peru, I never... That's someplace south. It's like in Florida somewhere, someplace down there. No, no. They've been missionaries there for a while now. They're like old pros. And I want to give them a chance to say something to you. They've been gone for a while. Jennifer's been gone for a long time. Kevin popped back a couple times for business purposes. Sad, sad thing. But come on now. Come on. You're going to sit there forever? You're going to get up here? Let's go, let's go. Everybody okay? You having a fever? You got a fever? Is it cold? You came from Chile. You came from the equator. I just saw you didn't wear flip-flops today. She came Wednesday night straight off the airplane and had flip-flops on. She was looking for them. Yeah? You guys can pretty much do this now, so I'm going to sit down. No. Go ahead. Chair, go ahead. Hola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buenos dias, senor. It's good to hear that. He's right. I mean, that's, a, that's an injection. That's good. And you get down there and, yeah. <laughs> and the, the Peruvians are mad. Cause Papa they, Noel. I can actually right? grow it. They're just mad. They get them little pricklies. And that's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's right. So, that's okay. But, man, it's glad to be back. Uh, I guess first and foremost, we just want to say thanks. And we appreciate your prayers mm -hmm. um, and your support, just everything. We, we really do appreciate that and everybody that's stepped up for us and done the things they've done. I'm sure Trent and Maggie still appreciate that right Absolutely, now, right? absolutely. So don't forget them. Um, man, we, you know, I don't know. I'd say love on them and the boys more, or her and the boys more than me, because I, I have. I've had the opportunity to come back, you know, maybe different circumstances, but still. You know, it's, it's, uh, but you're it's still, you're boys, still so yeah. lovable. Yeah, you're uh, still you know. so, mm, <laughs> no, oh, no. So you're saying you'll kiss me because she won't. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't take it that far. I didn't take. Did I take it that far? I got churros from downtown. I had to bribe her. I'm like, hey, I got something for you. What are you talking about? Oh, the night we got on the airplane, I bought churros. To get kisses? Yeah. Really? Yeah, she doesn't like it. She all. She likes those better than you, is what you're saying. I got a kiss out. What's a churro? What's is that? Oh, they're just. Is it? Right. I don't know. Because you say churro, we're thinking Cheerio. No, churro. It's got a little caramel feeling in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah? She really likes them. Oh. Deep fried goodness. There you go. Deep there you go. Goodness. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, but uh, we're, we're truly blessed. We appreciate, the, like I said, the prayers and the support, guys. And um, We've seen a lot of different stuff. Uh, we visited different churches. Um, 
just been a part of as much as we could get our hands into and, and, and get there. Uh, visited a couple river villages, stayed uh, five days in one, two and a half days in another. Um, just different, different, different things. You were telling Brian and I about this lady you ministered to that died. Yeah. And you had to roll her up in a hammock and <laughs> haul her and get her in a casket and dig her hole. Yeah. And the dad, you put the casket in, down in the hole and it wasn't deep enough and you had to pull it back out and the dad made you yeah. dig deeper. And yeah. that's a missionary uh, life right there. Uh, uh, and, hey, well, the experience has is, is just been unreal. Yeah. Um, just, to, just for that. I, I mean, we experienced death, trying to learn that process. I mean, we'd ask questions like, why? It's just so different. We're, it's it's the custom we're not used to, used to, so we try to learn about it and just figure it all out. And then we experience life. You know, a baby. We, they asked us to be a part of a, I don't know what you want to call it. A, a yeah, a little service for for a kid out back. And uh, death then I heard you had a, you were like the big main speaker at the whole city, <laughs> the city anniversary or I don't know, but. Were you the main speaker at that? Yeah, I guess. That, that, they tried to get the priest, but he wouldn't come. Is that what happened? Yeah, well, we were all down there, and, and we were just sitting there, and I was in my Grand Falcons T-shirt, a pair of work shorts. I had no idea this was going on. It was a parade. It was a parade. And, and next thing I know, he goes, hey, the priest can't make it. Can you speak? <laughs> Honey, go get my Bible. I just run off to a corner and start praying. I, I, there, that was a door. That God opened the door. I, but the whole community was there, right? They were Is all it? there. We've had a couple different occasions that just, bam, there it was. They had uh -huh. a stage there, yeah. and he was sitting up beside the mayor. And the, uh, I don't know. I don't know I, I'm there. over beside some tree watching this parade. The guy comes over and goes, hey, you're the man. I'm like, I'm just sitting. He goes, no, you need to be up there on the stage next to the other people. I'm like, Okay. Shorts and Graham Falcon shirt and the Bible. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, that was just good. another opportunity. God opened the door there and to talk to the people. And, and uh, we've had those opportunities to go back there and, and, and pray with people, talk with people, and just visit. So it's, it's been good. Be home through Christmas? I mean, that's the plan. And that's the plan. Yeah. Uh, January ish. You staying with mom? Are you staying with mom? Is that where we're at? We're actually at? in our house right now. Uh, two days before we got on an airplane, we got a word that somebody actually wanted to purchase our house. So the day I got back here, the next day, I, we we're in process of trying to get that taken care of. They'd like to close by November 15th. So God's God, yeah. pushing another door. Great. That's great. Good for you. Jennifer. Here you go. <laughs> I am so glad to be back. We're all so glad to be back. Uh, it is different. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the cold weather. I love the heat. Man, it hit uh, right as you came back too. Yeah, we went from mid 90s to mid 30s in 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, That's rough. But so happy to hear, see the faces and, and talk to everybody, and love the music. Oh, love the music. The worship here is like nowhere else. And, um, we were blessed. We went to a church that um, the preacher was. He could speak English and Spanish seamlessly would translate for himself back and forth in the service for us. And they had good music that we knew. Um, it was in Spanish, but we could still sing it, you know, in our hearts and, and sing it in English, but nothing like here, nothing at all. And it's given us a boost, a spiritual renewal that we really needed. Um, I love being down there. It's, it's, it's wonderful. People are friendly. Um, Mm -hmm. I was a little intimidated at first, not sure, because on the faces, when we walked around the neighborhood, they're probably wondering, who are you and why are you here? But you say hi, and they just light up, and they're so happy to have you there. Um, it was hard leaving, hard leaving my friends there, too, and the kids. And, you know, we had a, our whole front porch was full of kids. There were probably over 50 kids there when we left. And, and it was just, it was, it was warming to know that they welcomed us. And like the experiences he talked about, we felt like we were a part of that community. We felt like we belonged there. And um, that meant a lot. But being here, it's good to be back. And, and um, I do appreciate your prayers. We are so thankful. We had no, no illnesses, no, nothing severe. And you guys were eating everything, oh, right? We ate everywhere. We ate everything. 
I didn't. I stopped at the bugs and the worms. <laughs> Kevin and the boys. You'll eat the bugs. <laughs> You'll be a part of the culture. You might as well jump in. Yeah. I didn't Sweetie. jump that far. <laughs> but, you know, we were invited to people's houses, and they wanted to. You know, that that's how how they show their love for you. Yeah, and, it is. And welcome you in. And, um, it is. Food is a huge part of the culture. Absolutely. And, and, so we really felt that's something we need to do. We trusted in the Lord, and we relied on your prayers, and he was faithful. <laughs> and yeah. We were totally blessed. You can, what is that? You can drink any deadly thing, and it will not kill you, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Some of that stuff could have been deadly. To yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you did say, uh, didn't you say to me you thought they served you a dog once, didn't you? Uh, we don't you thought know. it was. They told us it was chicken, but when we got it home, it had pads on the feet and... <laughs> Pause. So. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Funny chickens. I didn't eat that. I didn't eat that. But. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, chicken. Yeah. It's all chicken. Chicken. Right? chicken. It's all chicken. <laughs> all right. Well, we're glad you're back, right? Aren't we glad you're back? Be with us a couple months here. Very good. Very good. I got you. Thanks. Did that fit? I don't know. All right. Hey, thanks for coming to church this morning. Glad you're so glad. So glad you're here. It is changing. Time weather is changing out there. Wouldn't it be great if this like Florida and it could just be No? You like the seasons, huh? Yeah. I used to. We got some people going south. A couple of folks going south. Um, Larry and Terry are going south this week, right? This week, and then we had a couple families in the first service going south. It seemed like the place for people to go in the winter from Ohio is Florida. So I, I just want everybody to know here that if the pastor's gone, at times I have to go on visitation. You understand? <laughs> so if, if there's, you know, I wouldn't want our folks in Florida over the winter just to feel like they weren't loved, you know. So I, I'm going to have to, so, anyhow. Yeah. That was my little guy, Connor. Did you see little Connor? Yeah. He, uh, I keep telling him, because he's got a real, just a friendly personality about him. I keep telling him, if he would say, my name's Connor, please vote for me, that he could go pretty far. So we're, we're thinking about running him for office here pretty soon, <laughs> about a couple years here, and see how he does. So I'm excited. Lord, would you bless our time together this morning? Um, thank you for worship time and just time to... God, acknowledge you with our hands up and our hearts lifted. And Lord, now as we enter this, this phase of just looking at your word, we want to realize again today, God, it's your word. It was written for us. It's all true. It, come, it came to give us hope. It came to speak us the heart of God, to us the heart of God. And I pray this morning as a preacher, I can just accomplish that. I can speak uh, with the heart of God this morning. I can say things, Lord, for you today that would be, God, uplifting and, and, and very needed in the lives of people here today. So, God, use me as a preacher this morning to do a good work. Thanks for time together. Thanks for all that have gathered here in this Westville building. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to start in Revelation chapter 3 this morning. Start there. I, we got on a, some stuff last week where we were talking about being overcomers. That idea of becoming an overcomer, that, that really that's part of the life of being a Christian. That we're going to have failings in, our, in ourselves and we're going to run into things at times that are very difficult. And we're not supposed to handle those things like the world handles those things. We're, not, we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So... We, as Christians, are very different than the average Joe out there. And we're not, I'm not trying to say we're better. I'm just trying to say we're different. Because we're not supposed to approach those problems in life, those failings in life, those hard things in life, the same as others do. Get that? We're going to start today in Revelation 3. Now, I will say to you that this is the last spoken word that was spoken to the church this generation. So this is the Laodicean church that Jesus is speaking to. These are the last words that he speaks into the church age in terms of 
He spoke this to the, the Apostle John, but this is written for the very moment we're living in right now. Catching that? After these verses are, are the rapture and the tribulation period in terms of Scripture, in terms of this prophetic Scripture of Revelation. But these are the last things that Jesus spoke to the, those that would live in our day. Catching this? Now, pretty important what Jesus is saying here. He says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Wow, man, I in first service I was able to really develop that thought. But isn't that a, an awesome thought? Where, where's Jesus at in terms of uh, us right now? He, the Bible says that he's standing at the door and knocking. Now, what's that mean? Does that mean he's at your house right now knocking and you're here at your... No, what that means is he's knocking on your heart's door. I, I, know, I know this for me over the years. And uh, I, I don't know how to explain this to you. Several, well, now it's been 15 or more years ago, the Lord really spoke to me about stepping up my life and walking in a call that he gave me. But before that period of time in my life, I did do some youth pastoring for a while, but I didn't fully try to live in everything that the Lord had for me. I would, how can I say this? I lived a dual life. I lived a life and I don't want to say I would lived a bad life in the world. I was not a bad person. In fact, I would pray with people and talk to people. Uh, ha had kind of a little ministry. I had an office, and people would come to my office all the time. I'd pray for them. God was working in me already. But, but I never really looked at the Scripture the way I've looked at the Scripture in the last 10 or 15 years. Does that make sense? I never applied everything in the Scripture to me. I kind of went, that was a nice Bible story. I, you know, I kind of get the point. It kind of makes sense to me. But, but I never really looked at that and said, that needs to be part of me. That needs to have an un, be an understanding that I have for me. That needs to be something that, that's meaningful to me. Does that make sense? The Scripture, at one point in my life, started to come alive. I started going to Bible college, and the Scripture started coming alive to me. I began to realize Jesus was talking to me, that the red letters in that book were words written there for me. It wasn't about a different time and a different place. All that was meaningful to me. I should grab that up. If it's in there, it's true for me. It ought to work in my life. It ought to have power in my life. It ought to be changing me. As I begin to walk in that, it's almost like as you begin in that, it just begins to revolutionize, just to absolutely transform your life. And all of a sudden, you start believing for all kinds of stuff that you didn't believe before because the Word really pushes us by faith out there beyond where we really want to be most of the time. Does that make sense? Yeah or no? Yep. By faith, the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 11, by faith, they did great things. By faith, they, 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 they called down fire, and by faith, they raised up the dead, and by faith, they did many mighty works. Jesus said at one point, greater things will you do than I did. Jesus said that. And because the word started being alive in me, I started experiencing the God stuff that every one of us is supposed to experience in our life. God began to move through me, and at times the Spirit of God would rest upon me, and, and I, the Lord would change things. God through me could change things. God through you can change things. The world around you doesn't have to, the Word of God transformed in me. And God's Spirit coming through me transforms things. You see? Believed enough that we thought the Lord was calling us to start a church. You catching that whole thing? Believed enough that, that, that I didn't have a lot of confidence in me, but I had a lot of confidence in the Lord. And I believed that the Lord could just work through me and, and that God would just bring people along and, and God was going to try to do something great here in Westville. This church got planted here, and we've grown, and it's been a wonderful experience for me. And we've seen many, God do many miracles and many wonderful things here. The greatest of which, we still continue to see people come to Christ as their Savior, which is the greatest of all miracles. That we're forgiven from, from being stained. Our stains or our sins can be washed clean. Amen. That's the greatest miracle there is. And we see that all the time around here, and we're thankful for that. We've seen the church grow here. What's been awesome is the, the Methodist church down here over the hill, and I don't want to, I, I love them. I love them very much. But the Methodist church down there over the hill has grown greatly, hasn't it, Joe? Just the fact that we came here, put a little pressure on them, 
And they started growing. They started building. They started a building project. So not only has this church grown and been here and God's done, but they've took off and grown and they've done mighty things, wonderful things affecting the community. Not only has that occurred, but we put missionaries on the field. And we see that for our church, we see that as a very important thing that God has called our specific church to. So when those folks come to talk to you about their life and how God, God just moving through them, they're, I, I just think that everybody that gives and everybody that supports and everybody that loves is, is going to share in the reward that God has given to them. You, you believe that to be true, don't you? Everybody that gives, everybody that cares, everybody that prays, all that stuff shares in the reward. Uh, they say uh, anybody that helps a prophet receives a prophet's reward. Does that make sense? Anybody that encourages a pastor or blesses a pastor or works along with, receives a part of the reward that the Lord's going to give a pastor. Does that make sense? Right. We share in things together. Catching that? You get that whole thing? You get that? Right. But we're a family in Christ Jesus. Now, I said all that to say, back to this verse, said all that to say, where's Jesus at? Last thing he says is that in the very day and age we live in, he's going to be standing at our heart's door knocking hoping we'll open the door and let him in, right? right? Hoping he'll let him in. Now, I said to you that whole story because at one point in my life, I, I said, Lord, i got to let you in. i got to quit letting the stuff of the world compete with the stuff of God. i got to get the stuff of God first in my life. It's got to become the most important stuff in my life. That's got to be. i got to make changes for the Lord. I had to open the door of my heart and say, Lord, come in. And, and I'm telling you, the Lord continues to want to move in my life and in my heart, and he's still knocking in areas there, and I'm saying, Lord, come in. In fact, today, I'm just in front of all of you, Lord, come into my life. Lord, come in. Lord, come on in here. You've got to promise, Lord, if you're knocking, you want to come in. It says, uh, open the door, I will come in with him and dine with him and he with me. What's that mean? That the Lord wants to come in and spend time with me. That makes sense? I believe the greatest days for our church, the greatest days in terms of ministry, I think the things in the world are going to get really hard. You all know it. You know that's true, don't you? And I believe the greatest days for the church are still ahead. I believe it so much that I want the Lord to continue to transform me. I'm trying to commit myself to more prayer time and more Bible reading time, more of that stuff than I've ever done in my life. That makes sense? Because I believe the greatest time for the church is ahead. I want to prepare my, I want the Lord to come in. Lord, come in. Lord, right here, talk to me, God. Be part of my life. I want you in everything that I do and everything that I say, right? right. But doesn't that look like that's what the Lord's heart is here in this verse? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Why would the king... Stand at our, why would he come to my house? Why would he knock on my door? Why does he care about me? What, why? He loves us. Oh, how he loves. God loves us. Why does he care about us? Why is he at our door? He loves us. I get a chance to the pastor come visit sometimes. Why am I at your door? I love you. We used to have a guy in our church here, and he had a drinking problem. And he would say to me, Pastor Mark, i got to overcome this alcohol in my life. I just got to, I got to, I got to. I said, brother, you want me to help you? He said, please help me, please help me, please help me. I said, okay. So what I started doing was saying, hey, this is how, just how I believe. Um, my parents kind of taught me, not a whole lot of good happens after 10 o'clock. So the best way to get people in bed by 10 o'clock is to get them up early, right? I do that on missions trips. If I take your teenagers on a missions trip, you know what I do? I get them up really early. So by 10 o'clock, they're like, uh, I'm not going to run around and be stupid. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> okay? So... This man, I said, okay, if you want me to help you, we're going to start doing what I know to do. And we're going to get up early and we're going to pray together. And we're going to... So he lived in St. Paris. And what happened was every morning I go to his house about 7, 7.30. And I start beating on his door. Well, this guy still had a little bit of drinking in him. You know, he was still 
he hadn't laid that whole thing away, but he's asking me to help. So the night before, he had him a few, you know. I'd beat on the door for a while. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Well, he asked me to help, right? So I got a friendly knock, and then I got a knock where you're starting to irritate me, right? And that knock starts going, boo, 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 I had the neighbors looking out the door. He wouldn't come to the door. Now, I take this seriously, right? I know where his bedroom is. In the house. I've been in the house, so I go back to the bedroom window. Boom, 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 boom. I hear him in there. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, are you in there? Dude, you told me to help. Come on, get up, let's go. Not this early. No, no, man, this is how we're helping. Get up. And I'd drag him out, <laughs> and we'd get working for the day, and he'd be doing good. Next day, boom, 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 go to his window, bam, 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 okay. I started saying, dude, you got to be up when I get there. Come on, this is taking too long. Get, get up. I'm gonna... One day I came with one of those air horns. I didn't even knock on the door. I just knew he was, Arr! ah, quit it. <laughs> I either loved or scared that guy right out of drinking. I'm not sure. But he, he ended up, over time, moving to Florida, and he had some family there. He wrote me a note one day, and the note was, I've never seen anybody love me enough. I, when I asked you to help me, I didn't know you really would. The only thing I know is if Jesus will come to my door, he's there to help me. If Jesus is at my house, he's there because he cares about my house, and he cares about my life, and he cares about my heart, and he cares about my problems, and he cares. Listen, come to your house, the bird, the, the bug killer comes to your house. You know, they're coming there because whatever, the, somebody's at your house because they want face to face. They want time with you. They want to deal with the issues, problems. Jesus said here, he doesn't say, hey, uh, I'll meet you at the church. He says, I'm knocking on your heart. I'm knocking. I'm at your house. If anyone hears, I just take a minute here. This isn't the verses we're going to end on, but if anybody hears, what's that, what's that mean? If the stereo is cranking, what, can you hear? There's a young man in Peru that, uh, I don't know what his deal is, but he's the son of one of the pastors, and I love this pastor, but his son always likes to have these little earbuds in his ear. And I uh, love the kid, but he's always got this on, and I always see him doing... And he actually can speak some English, and he can help me translate sometimes, but I'll turn around to try to talk to him, and he'll be... And I've reached, I don't know how many times I reached over and went, pop, pop those things out of his ear and said, hey, pay attention. One day I finally said to him, I, I just got up to here with him. I said, you listen to me, buddy. So help me. If I see those things in your ear when you're around me anymore, I'm going to, instead of popping them out, I'm going to pop them in. <laughs> He's like, huh? Try me. Well, he would, this last time I was there, he had a cell phone. He got him a fancy cell phone. So we were trying to work and stuff, and I'd turn around, he'd be texting over there on the cell phone. Anybody have kids that do that, just drive you crazy? Anybody? Text on that cell phone. And I finally said, if you don't put that thing up, I'm going to mix it in this concrete. But that, and I'm not trying to pick on this kid, you don't know him, but, but I, my deal with him is he never wants to hear. He always wants to be involved in, he always, so for, for me to be able to hear God, I got to, Lay down my stuff for a minute to be able, that makes sense? I got to take a minute. I, I believe with all my heart, the Lord will speak to us if we'll give him place, if we'll give, him, give ears to hear, if we'll give him time, if we can settle everything for just a minute, 
The Bible, I know people say, that sounds so weird to God to speak. Listen, if you'll get quiet, the Lord will speak. When your life is in chaos and you're worried about all your problems and you got all this stuff and the music going, the kids are going, all this stuff's going, life, and we run life like that nowadays. The one thing that God's going to require of you if you're going to ever hear his voice is you get still. Be still and hear my voice. If I can just proclaim something over you, if I, if I can speak something, the Lord's saying, listen, I'd love to talk to you, but you got to get still enough to hear my voice. Be still. No, I'm God. Know that I'm able to fix. You're running crazy, but I can fix a bunch of that stuff for you. I can calm you. I can chill you out. I can solve that stress issue. If you'll just stop and listen for, if you'll just settle for, if you'll just give me a minute. I'm standing at your heart's door. I'm knocking. I'm trying to get you to hear me. Will you hear me? I'm so glad you're in church this morning because it's an opportunity to hear God. I pray that I'm... Lord, let me represent you right. That makes sense? But you got to, I, I say this about my wife, and I'm going to get in trouble. But my, I, my relationship with my wife, listen, isn't that I'm always distant from her. The relationship with my wife is, I, I just in my life, I'd like to give her 20 to 45 minutes a day where she can just say anything she wants to to me. What I found is that solves a lot of trouble, then I can go do whatever I want to do. It's okay. But if I ever go do what I want to do first, and it takes up all the time, and I don't have time with her, that ain't okay. Right? I marry her. She wants my attention. Right? In fact, us good men are always guilty of our work taking attention away from our wives, and shame on us. If I, I'll be 50 this next year. If there's one thing I change... Once I turn 50 in my life, or 51, or 52, or 50, no. One thing I want to change is I want to spend more time with her. You know? She was telling me this week about a website out there where all these pastor wives are on the website, and how they just are all so upset because their husbands are so caught up in everybody else's business. But, and I'm just thinking in my heart, I'm thinking, man, that's not what I want to be for her. But take that whole thing, and God who loves us, who's standing in our heart's door trying to knock, he's trying to knock, he's trying to get, he wants to come in, he wants to be part, but we're just so busy, we're, we run in a vacuum with the ear, pod, ear pods in. Run, woo, 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 woo. We can't hear a thing because we're, the Lord's knocking at our door. We can't hear him. We didn't make time or space for him. That makes sense? I know how many of you are because I'm the same. What we do, we do a lot of praying and singing and worship in the car, right? I've seen you all, you crazy people like me, got tears running down your face in the car driving. I'm like, man, don't hit me. <laughs> the one thing I missed about driving to Dayton to work every day was I had 50 minutes of just cranking up that radio and just singing. People be driving by going... I realized I don't have my hands on the wheel. Oh. <laughs> but we don't, listen, the God, great big guy, the ruler of the heavens and the earth, the one, hey, who his words created everything, who has all authority over heaven, over hell, over everything there is, is standing at your heart's door trying to knock, trying to speak to you, trying to be part of your life. And we're so busy with, with this world that we don't have time for him? I'm not saying anything that I haven't had to challenge myself with. I, there's days, woo, we have days like that, don't we? If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and him with me. That's pretty all right. Now, that whole eating dinner with, I don't know, many of, many of you have ate dinner with me. I think that goes to a different level of relationship. I don't know. I just, people that I get time with, I just get to know them. And I enjoy that people are very different than me, thank goodness. I enjoy spending time. I do very much. Brian, we got a water softener problem. Brian's a water softener guy. Hey. Why don't you come out this week? Yeah. Hey, hey, come out. Let me know, and we'll just eat together. Is that okay? 
Now I got my water softener problem fixed, and we got a de- de- lunch date. I love being my old pastor. That I get stuff fixed at home at the same time. I, joke. I just joke. Is that all right? You let me know when you're coming. Can you can you set that up, Jamie? I told you I talked to him there. I talked to him. <laughs> I've been up there at Andy Smith's house, and they built that nice room on the back. It's a really neat room there, and I don't. You don't feed me too often. No. You don't? You have? I just don't remember. <laughs> Who? You Did you? Do you remember? Was it any good, Jamie? It was really good? <laughs> Kim and Jim have had us over. Their house is just, they got the coolest ceilings in their house. I love the ceilings in their house. Why am I saying all that? Because... Good question. Because <laughs> there's a level of relationship you have when you start. In Peru, they just said it a second ago. There's something about Peru where just eating together. Is a, and, and in the early church, eating together was a big. Jesus, in this culture, it was very different. When they were eating together, that means they were close. Does that make sense? We don't see it like that because we're, we're working and we don't do that like we used to do that as much as we And it wasn't about that. You know, we're not as driven these days about a relationship, close relationship with folks. Come on and sis. She's had a bloody nose for a while, Grandma. Help her out. She was, nose was bleeding earlier. But the Lord's saying something here beyond what we know. He's saying, I will stand at your house, knock on your door. I want to come in and I want to have relationship with you. I want to be close. I want to be close. You getting that? Look at the next verse here. Man, time's going. To him who overcomes, now those are verses back to back, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sit down with my father on his throne. Now, that's pretty amazing, right? Hey, I want to come in and dine with you. I, I want to let me in. And, and then it says, but who, those who overcome, now there's something connected between sitting down with you and overcoming. I don't know if you get that, but, but this thought that we started last week that Christians are overcomers, there's something about spending time dining with the Lord, communing with the Lord that makes us overcomer because the next thought he has, I'm eating with you. And the next thing he says, and then you become overcomers. You catching that whole thing? No, yeah? yeah? If I get close to the Lord, the Lord gets close to me. Draw near to me, and I'll be near to you, the Lord says, right? And I'll lift you above stuff. Now, this thought of overcoming, you see it right there, is this thought where in this world we run into stuff, and we can't get past it. The world runs into stuff, and they can't get past it. The world runs into stuff, and they fight, or they get mad, or they, or they go another way, or they take something to feel better. The world isn't trying to have this thought of overcoming. There are some businessmen that, you know, this, what's funny is some of these uh, uh, positive teachers or these lecturers that are positive thought or the team building, all it's the bi- biblical thought. Isn't that funny? That the, the wisest worldly counsel in terms of uh, business and that kind of stuff is just what the Bible teaches about. But we teach it that we overcome through Christ Jesus and him communing with us and him being close to us, right? So we run into a wall, we run into a person, we run into a thing, we run into a problem, we, we run into a sickness, whatever. We run into that thing and what happens? In our own flesh, we can't do anything, right? But the Lord, hey, The Lord is trying to get us, through a relationship with him, trying to get us to the place where we overcome those problems. God doesn't want us stuck by problems. God wants to listen. That whole concept of of flying like an eagle that we see in the verse, Isaiah 41 verse. Jim's got the t-shirt on right there. That whole concept is the Lord will be with us through every difficult thing. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. What, how's the verse about the eagles go? We will rise up with wings like eagles, is what it says. So the Lord's saying, hey, I'll do something in you that raises you above. 
It raises you above life's problem. It raises you. Listen, if you start fighting with something, when you run into, what happens there? Anybody ever ran into something and you start fighting it? If it's a person, you start fighting with that person, what happens? Is that an overcoming way to deal with that? No, that just means the battle's on, right? You girls get that very much, don't you? I'm going to deal with this with harsh words. What happens? That fixed it, right? That made everything better. But what the Lord wants to do is begin to build something up in us. Hey, the Lord's saying to those who overcome, how do we overcome? Well, we've been communing with the Lord. We've been dining with the Lord. We've spent time with Him. The Lord's placed, deposited something in us that allows us to rise above problems. Christians, listen to me. Christians ought to be the place where they go to a deep place with the Lord to overcome their problems. Catching this? Everybody getting that? Christians, sometimes, because we just think it's the right thing, we, go, we look for worldly solutions to overcome our problems. I want to tell you, every Christian in this place, every, for every problem you'll ever have, the greatest, uh, the greatest thing you can do to ever combat a problem you have is get down on your knees before the Lord and say, God, I got a problem. And go looking in the scripture for what the answer is. They sang a song last night. There was a song fest little thing here last night. Some older folks sung, and it was beautiful. It was wonderful. Anybody over 55 would have loved it. I actually loved it. But, but, but Steve brought out his little guitar. He had a little, like, what do you call that? Ukulele. Ding, 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 ding. What was the name of that song, Steve? Broken World. And I remember one line in it was, this world's got no answers. They might have a temporary answer, but they got no answers. This world's broken. This is broken, man. In this broken world, go, go find an answer in a broken world. You know what it'll do? It'll just uh, maybe be a temporary fix, or it'll just be something that's a temporary patch. What? Duct tape, that's pretty funny. Just be a duct tape answer, won't it? Super glue. It won't be about getting anything new. It won't be about getting anything higher. It won't be about moving in life more into your purpose, more into what God's called. It won't be a growing thing. It'll be duct tape. Good, thank you, I needed that. Duct tape, a Band-Aid. Because the world don't have any answers. The scripture here is saying, hey, when you run into a problem, he who overcomes will sit, uh, I will grant you to sit with me on my throne. Now, i got to have some help here. Who's, where's the young, Cody, come here for a minute, Cody, please, come quick, hurry, hurry. It's too slow already, come on. <laughs> come down here, help me. Did, were you down here last week too? No, come here, Cody. And sh come on, come on, come on, grab a chair right there, come here, come here. Come here, grab a chair, oh, there's a chair right here, come here, forget that, come here. Sit down right here. Oh, for just a minute, you're going to be Jesus, man, the, the man right there, right there, Jesus. Boosh! Look at him. Man, I hope Jesus is better looking than that. <laughs> what are you thinking? You nervous? No. You're probably thinking, what the heck's he doing? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> it's knife from down here? Yeah? Listen. What this verse says is this. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me. On my throne. I, I just think there's a, an illustration here I can give that really helps us. For me who will commit myself to overcoming and going to a deeper place with the Lord that rises me over my problems, the Bible says that I will sit with him on his throne. Come on, man. Give me some room here, Jack. <laughs> a Christian song out there. Oh, I dropped that. Yeah. It's caught on something. It's caught on our squeeze right there. <laughs> what? We're good. You didn't give me enough space. And Great. Huh? Come on, man. I know my butt's lower than yours. Oh, I'm about right, off. Right now. What? what? 
I have no idea what you just said. Okay. There's a Christian song out there right now. You know it? Know you want to sing it with me? It talks about being an overcomer. You have overcome. How's that go? Well, did we sing it? To, we sung something that had overcoming in it this morning. But what the promise is, listen to me. The promise for us believers who, who life's but a vapor and things pass quick. If we'll be people who press into God, dine with God, commune with God, the promise is for those who overcome, we'll sit with the Lord on his throne. Does that help you any? I know the Lord. What's awesome about God is God gives us a reason for doing it right now, but God always gives us a reason for doing it that's eternal. Right now, if, if we can overcome, then we don't let those problems slow us down. But if we overcome, the eternal reward from that is that we, because we let him in, it's just kind of funny, and I, this is how I see those verses connected, because they look like they don't. If I let him in to commune with me here on earth, then he lets me share his throne when we get to heaven. Isn't that amazing? Th just think about, just think about, that takes us to a whole nother level of who Christ is. That in heaven, the Lord will let us sit down with, isn't that, that he isn't trying to be, he's, hey, get up here, man, come on, get up here, sit me. You made it. Mark, you made it. Come up here and sit down with me. Cody, we made it, man. We made it. You got nothing to worry about because you're just going to sit up here in the throne with me. And I don't know if you understand the whole representation of what a throne is. You know what a throne is? It represents what? Royalty. It represents that I've become royalty. That I overcame something, and because I overcame something, the Lord called me rich. He called me royal. He called me eternally great. You get that whole thing? Why do we overcome? Because in this life, it's the best thing we can do. But in the next life, it has great reward. It's where God wants us to be. I think as Christians, we don't see that whole thing, this whole understanding of where does God want me to be? God wants me to become an overcomer. God wants me to be bigger, better. God wants me to grow. God wants me to be so close to him that the problems of this world don't, don't stop me. And if you'll get close enough to me that the problems of this world don't stop you, when you get up here with me, well, you'll just be sitting up here with me. Is that amazing? It's amazing. I don't think we realize that when we hit a problem. I don't think we realize that when we're going through the toughest things. That there's people in here today that are going to do very tough things in life. There are people here right now that have bad medical reports. There are people right here right now that have financial stress like they've never had. There are people right now in this place that got marriage trouble. They've, oh my goodness. They'd love to just walk away. It'd be easier just to walk away. I could go on. But the Lord's saying, don't handle this in a worldly way. I'm knocking on your heart's door. Let me in. Now, this is the last thing that Jesus said because he knew in this day that we would live in that there were going to be more problems than there's ever been. I'll tell you, in Jesus' day, they never had car trouble. The phone was never broke. The Internet was never down, right? You know what I mean? They had a cobbler that put new bottoms on their sandals. They had different kind of issues than we do. But in this day, the Lord would say, hey, if you'll, if you'll just open your heart to me, I'll come in and I want to build a relationship with you that's eternal. It isn't just now. It's forever. You get close to me now, you'll be close to me forever. The one thing that I've known about my life is the closer I get to the Lord the more I realize this is forever. These are things that are going to last forever. You catching all that? To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I have overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Is that right? Did Jesus have some things to overcome? 
How do you think he got this throne? What's he saying about it? He's saying, hey, because I overcame, I'm sitting here with my father. He's sitting right there with the father. There might be three of us on this throne, man. He's saying, I overcome, and the father gave me a throne to sit on. You overcome, I'll give you a throne to sit on. It's funny, I was uh, teaching a class this week, and a guy said, one thing the Lord will never give us is a throne to sit on. And I think he meant, what he meant was, I don't know what he meant, but I looked at him and said, that ain't true. What he was trying to say is, we'll never be like God. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. The Lord's going to let me right into his place. The Bible says, listen, someday we'll see him face to face. And what's it say we'll look like? The Bible says, I don't know what I'll be, but I do know that I will be like him. It's incredible. It's incredible what God has ahead for us. It's incredible how God wants us to overcome life's circumstances. It's incredible how God wants to do that in our lives by communing with us, by, being, by just let, let it speaking to us and knowing us and talking back and, and developing a really close relationship. That relationship ends in eternity just like this. We think it's going to be, you know, books are open and they're looking for our name and hopefully our name's found in it. But no, it's going to be, hey, brother. In fact, the Bible says that, that the Lord has a name for us that we don't know. God has a special name for us. He's going to say, hey, moron, get up here to me, to me. Get up here, silly. Get up here, Pastor Mark. You overcame a few things. I, I want to just share my seat here. You catching that whole idea? As I have overcame, Jesus overcame. Listen, let me just tell you what Jesus overcame. Jesus carried the sin of the whole world. I'm just enjoying sitting here with you, so we're just, you, you okay? You're just oh, looking yeah. around, so. Jesus carried the sin of the whole world to the cross. The whole thing. He carried all of our healing. He carried all of our messes. He carried all of our pain. He carried every one of our struggles, every wall we'd run into. He, he purchased that for that stuff, that problem that we run into. Listen, God has already dealt with that thing. And the way he chooses to deal with it is he'll put something in us that allows us to rise above. The Lord never says, in fact, he says, in this world there'll be tribulation. That's what he says. To every one of us, every Christian here, he says to us, in this world, there's going to be tribulation. At some point, you're going to get a doctor's report you don't like. At some point, you're going to get a bill you can't pay. At some point, you're going to deal with things you didn't see coming. I think of that commercial where that guy has a cup of coffee in the morning, and he's rushing into work, but there's a glass door, and he doesn't realize the glass is, and he poof, runs right into it. We're going to run into things we didn't see. In this world, there'll be tribulation. Jesus never said, I'll stop the tribulation. God never said, I'll stop all your problems. The Lord said, I'll give you enough strength to overcome every one of those. Amen. You belong to me. If you let me in, I'll give you what you need to overcome. You're an overcomer is what the Lord's saying. Be an overcomer. Right. With me and you, the Lord's speaking, with me and you together, there's nothing going to slow you down. Nothing can hold you back. You're not going to be stuck in that place. Right. You're going to let those words stop you? You're going to let those problems stop you? You're going to let those bills stop you? You're going to let that situation? No. Why? Because greater is he who lives in me than he that lives in the world. Is that right? That's right. Next verse as we close, it just says this. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So you know who's, listen, you know who's going to live in this truth? This whole thing I just demonstrated before you. You know who's going to live in that? People who have ears to hear. The Spirit is trying to speak to us today. If you'll have year, ears to hear, I'll raise you above all your stuff. You'll become an overcomer. And the end of, for this overcomer is you'll sit with me forever in my throne. That's pretty exciting. Listen, I wish that for every single one of us, right? I wish that for every one of us. Those are the promises that Jesus gave us, the last words that he spoke to the very time we live in. That's what the Lord wants us to live in. He doesn't want us dragged down by everything. He wants us growing in him to overcome. Lord, we thank you for time together today. Thank you for my good friend Cody here. Thank you for what you're trying to speak to us. Make us overcomers. 
God, I pray that this crazy, silly illustration causes us to see spiritual truths. That God, you not let us get stopped at the next problem that comes, or the one that we're in right now. But you'd cause us to press into you. You'd cause us to clear some time, Lord, where we can talk, where we can dine together. We, you can spend time with me and me with you. That's what your heart is. It's amazing that you even want that in, for me. But God, you invited me to a table. You invited me with time for you, and I want to take that. I know, Lord, if I spend time with you, you'll put stuff in me that changes me so I can overcome my troubles. God, I'm looking forward to the day when I fully understand that and I can fully have victory in my life over my troubles. And I look forward to the day when I'll have victory over all my life in an eternal place where I'll sit down with you, Lord, and we'll rest and we'll dine together there also. But let me grab these, these, these principles today, Lord. Let me grab this stuff. I'm not supposed to be like the world. You living in me are supposed to be greater than the world. I'm supposed to be great inside of me because of you in me. Help me grab that today. Help me become an overcomer. Bless our church, Lord. Bless the word as I spoke it today. Cause it to do a powerful thing in our lives. We'll ever give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. Give Cody a hand, would you? All right. We'll see you next week. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I appreciate it.